Hello again, everyone. This is a follow-up video to my last one. If you haven't watched the last one about me slabbing uh, ore samples for a student project here, you might want to go back and watch it first. But um, I had to change my mind a little bit about how I was going to do things. I wasn't exactly happy with my plan. Even though I got a good plan for the project for the students, uh, I realized that the way I had it, each student was going to be taking 20 minutes to half an hour to do their cutting, and because I have 30 students in the class, that's like 15 hours worth of cutting. It's just too much, too much. So I had to cut back on the amount of cutting, and also I realized there was just too much oil on the rocks afterwards. Even if I washed it really carefully, there was too much oil on the rocks for crushing them down and panning them out, because oil and gold really do not get along. So I had to modify my plan a bit. And I think what I came up with is instead of two cuts in the rock to get a slab out and then crushing down one half, I think instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the rock before we cut. Break it so we have a clean half that we can crush down and we can cut the other half in half again uh, so you can see a nice clean cut of the inside of the rock. That way there's only one cut to make, cuts the cutting time in half, and also we get a clean rock for crushing down. So I'm here today to sort of figure that out, to get all the details of that, and to set up the crushing so it's all ready when the students get back. So here's one that we cut. And you can just see the oily surface on it. It's still, there's too much of it soaked into that rusty surface. Even after cleaning, there's still a lot of oil there, and I think that would really affect the whole panning of the crush afterwards. So instead, I think we're just going to take the big hammer, break the sample in half, take part of it, put it aside for crushing, take the other part, and take one cut through it. That way we have one 10 minute cut, 10 or 15 minute cut, rather than two, we get one nice looking sample, so we can see what the inside of the rock looks like, and a piece that's going to be easy to crush down into a powder and pan out. That's my plan. Let's see if I can make that work. It's still Christmas break here at school, so there's still no students around, um, and it gives me some time to develop this project. So it's going to be running perfectly. Let's hope perfectly uh, after Christmas break. Well, see you in a bit. So my plan here is to use the manual pipe crusher here to break down the samples into manageable pieces. And I've got three of those, so you know, I can get the students to do that fairly, fairly quickly. And then to powder it, the pipe crusher will powder it, but it's slow to do that. Uh, to powder it here, we got the little Cobra crusher here, modified, my own little design here. Thank you very much to Jeff Williams for uh, his suggestions of doing this. So uh, the, co the Cobra Crusher here, to powder the smaller pieces. Well, we'll put everything through and it just discharges down into the pan. We'll sift through to make sure we still don't have any chunks and chunks we can rerun and then we can pan it out. Now, the Cobra Crusher does make a bit of dust, so I have got the vacuum set up just so that we can mitigate the dust it's kicking off there. And again, it's a good time for me to talk to students about silicosis and whatnot, the dust coming off this, and all the other bad things that might be in there. But to try to prevent the need for dust masks for everyone, hook up the dust, the vacuum cleaner, and see if we can suck the dust away as it's going here. At least that's the plan. Let's see if it comes together like that. I just have one little random chunk right now that I'm going to try and see how it works. Oh, I'm not sure if I can do this with the camera in my hand. Rock in. That should be enough to crush it into manageable sizes. I need something to dump that into. Let's grab another pan. Another pan. Mm -hmm. So 
those will all fit in the crusher quite nicely. All right, let's see if I can set the camera somewhere that will show this off in a nice way. Oh, let's not take the camera pointed that way. It shows my very messy desk at the moment. Okay. How's that looking? That'll work. So I have to do something more with this vacuum. Let's see what we can do over here. Let's see if that's any better. seem to have any suction so I'm gonna have to check quick check the filters and whatnot because that was still too much dust All right, let's have a look nicely powdered material a few little bigger chunks but I think we're good with that let me go pan that one out right now see what there may have been in it Material, but there's no gold in that. I need more water. Hmm. 
Okay, I figured out the vacuum problem. After cleaning the filter and didn't seem to help, so I cleaned the filter even better and that still didn't seem to help. I decided to look in the hose and sure enough, there was a nasty blockage in the hose. So, cleared out the hose. Now with a real clean filter, we got lots of suction. That should knock the dust way down. And uh, I'm gonna try one more piece. See if I can find myself a piece of gold. That would be awesome. Okay, I got the camera on a tripod right now. Um, I've gr just grabbed a bunch of little pieces at the bottom of the bin, pieces that are going to be too small for the students to use anyways. Well, it feels like mostly iron. And I'm just going to crush them up, test the crusher one more time, make sure it all works nicely, and let's hope it's some gold. Yes, I should have uh, ear protection on for this. And probably dust mask too. surface. Uh, hopefully the camera's got that. Otherwise I'll edit it out. That's crazy. Let's see what this holds. Oh, where's that camera? There it is. 
Well, it's a rock that was a little bit too big. Got through somehow. Hey, there we go. Okay, where is that camera? I may have to pick up the camera. Two flakes. Flakes. They're flakes because they got crushed down like that. And a little bit of fine stuff, which you won't be able to pick up on here, but I'll try to take a picture of that and see if I can put it in the video. Oh, there's a lot of fine stuff in there, actually. See what we can do with the camera here. Not with that light. Let's get away from that light. So let's hope that uh, picture did a lot better than the video, because video never does a great job of picking up gold. Well, I think I've got a plan. Crushers are working nicely, the pipe crusher, great for knocking down smaller pieces. The Cobra Crusher here powders it beautifully. A uh, little worried about the dust situation still. I think I'm going to have to go and buy some dust masks for everyone. I don't want the students breathing in that nasty stuff. It's more than just the silicon in there, more than just rock dust that I'm worried about. There's some pretty nasty stuff in gold ores, so let's get them all dust masks as well as the vacuum. But it all seems to work really well. Slabbing the stone. That was working well the other day. Looks like it should be a pretty good assignment for the students. They get to go and play around with hard rock order and they're gonna write a little bit of report of what they find. It should be fun. I got ores from all sorts of different mines. Oh, there's some other stuff I just picked up the other day. Up the hill from me, from an old mine site. Should be lots for the students to play with and uh, it should be fun for them. Well, this is what I do on my time off. Is I come back into work and work more, go figure. But anyhow, it's fun. And the better the assignment is uh, developed for the students, the more fun both the students and myself have doing it. Well, hopefully soon the weather will break and we'll be able to get back outside and do some more prospecting outdoors rather than this indoor prospecting. But uh, until then, we're stuck here. It's only like three days away from Christmas, so who am I to complain? It's the middle of winter right now. Let's hope January is a bit nicer outside. Well, guys, that was another one. And hopefully the next one is in the bright, sunny outdoors on the Fraser River somewhere. Until then.